Hi, I'm Tyler with Lumberjacks Tree Service. Welcome to our warehouse. Uh, when I first started sawmilling, I ran into a problem that I'm sure a lot of you have experienced by now. Uh, you have plenty of logs, you have a nice sawmill. Unfortunately, the uh, market for green undried lumber is pretty narrow, uh, which left me with only a couple of options. I could cut pallet stock, uh, which is great, but the profit margins are so small you have to move a large volume of it. Uh, I could sell it to a customer that was willing to let the lumber dry, uh, but most of the time they expected a pretty heavy discount. Uh, or I could take my lumber to a wholesaler and they would dry it on their own, but unfortunately uh, they usually offered not much more than the logs themselves were worth. So that really only left me with about two choices. I could either stack and air dry my lumber, which is great, but it takes several months, sometimes several years, before you have a usable product with varying degrees of quality, or you can build a lumber kiln, which is what I decided to do. Um, I run a Nile L200, which is a dehumidification kiln. Uh, whether you buy the Timber Kings, the uh, Wood Misers, whatever, it's the same kiln system. It's all from Nile, it's all the exact same thing, just with a different sticker on it. Now, this is my second kiln, and uh, I made some changes on this one over the first one. And I just kind of want to share with you guys some of the changes and some of the basics on the design. When I first made my first kiln, uh, there wasn't very much information online. So I kind of had to take a guess at a lot of things. Uh, what I did notice though, there was two basic designs. There was the side load, which is a long narrow chamber with the door on the side. Uh, most of the time you either have to hand stack it or there's a cart system that slides in and out or the one that I prefer which is the barn style doors that open out and I like those because it gives me a big wide entrance uh, it makes it easy to stack and bring bundles in and out uh, unfortunately the downside to that is the doors are very heavy and they're prone to sagging as you see here one of the changes I've made is I've added wheels to the bottom of my doors that allows them to open and close very easily and helps support the doors on the end to keep them from sagging. Now, another major change that I made from my last design was that I tried to save a little bit of money by going with uh, fiberglass insulation. Uh, and as you see here, this time we've decided to go with uh, spray foam insulation. Uh, we have two inches of closed cell and behind that we have insulation board. Um, hopefully this time it will help seal it up a little bit better, keep the kiln, or the kiln operating at a good temperature and make it easier on the heating unit. Um, one thing that we still have left to do is to install the baffles. Now what the baffles do is they close the area around the fan and also to the side of the lumber. And that allows the air to be forced through the bundles, uh, allowing for more efficient drying. Um, now, one thing that's nice about the Nile systems is that they come with uh, moisture probes. Uh, they're, part of the moisture probe screws into the lumber, uh, and then you connect these probes into it. Um, it has a computer that monitors the moisture content. So that way there's no need for going in and out of the kiln all the time, checking the moisture content and getting an idea of if your lumber's ready or not. Now it also comes with a wet bulb and a dry bulb system. Uh, I'll get into more of that later if you guys are interested. Uh, right now I'm just really gonna kind of uh, describe the basics uh, and the design of this. So, uh, another change that I've made over last time was we've added an auxiliary heater. Uh, what I noticed was that, you know, while this thing's really good at, you know, pulling the moisture out of it and getting the wood good and dry, it was very slow about bringing the chamber up to temperature. Uh, normally these things operate from 110 to 150 degrees. Uh, it would take 24 to 36 hours a lot of times for this to even bring it up to temperature. So I've added a 5600 watt industrial heater um, now, one thing I need to add is if you guys are going to try to save a little bit of money and put this thing together yourself, um, you need to keep in mind that the box fans and the heaters that you buy at, the, at like Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's are not rated to constantly operate 
at these temperatures. So keep that in mind as you're designing and building your kiln. Uh, now this is the main Nile unit right here. It contains a uh, heater, uh, a compressor, and a blower. Pretty much it just you know heats the air up, forces it out, and then when it brings it back through, it pulls the, uh, the moisture out of the air. Now as you can see down here, I still need to hook up my condensation tube. Um, that go, pipes out to the outside, and as the unit draws the moisture out, it you know allows it to drain to the outside of the structure. Um, I've added a side door here um, to allow me to be able to come in and come out uh, kind of if I need to check on anything without having to open the front doors up and just letting all of the heat out. Um, this box right here, this is our uh, computer system. When I, uh, when I purchase the system, uh, Nile has an upgrade. So instead of manual controls, you can get the uh, computer control system, which is what this is. Uh, and it kind of does all of the, the legwork for you as far as figuring some stuff out. Now, if you'll come in a little bit closer here, you can see on the readout screen, we have dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, and then you also have the moisture content that the four probes are reading, as well as the average moisture content of the chamber. Um, now, one thing that is nice about this system is that, you know, one, you can turn your probes on and off. So if you just want to put one or two in there, you can turn the other probes off. Uh, also, you know, you can set your dry bulb and your wet bulb temperature. You know, that helps kind of control everything as well. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, and then you can also program your wood groups, whether you're drying softwood, hardwood, you know, whatever, um, you know, that right there also will change the behavior and the rate at which it's drying. Another thing that I've done, I've hooked my fans up on their own independent switch. Um, I found that that's easier than having them connected into the control box. And you can see right here, I have a switch um, for the auxiliary heaters. This is a 50 amp box. It's on its own switch. That way I can turn it off and on as needed. Um, I really hope this has helped you guys out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, you know, feel free to contact me.